years. Well, we feel like we've been here for a lifetime. Amen. Uh, you all just made us feel so welcome, and we certainly appreciate that. And that's the way it should be amongst brothers yeah. and sisters in Christ. That's right. You know, we should have that fellowship, and and uh, we should feel welcome and, and comfortable around each other. And yeah. You all have definitely welcomed us in and made us feel very comfortable. Here, and we appreciate that. So tonight, I want to talk about resting in the Lord. Uh, according to a Greek legend in ancient Athens, a man noticed the great storyteller Aesop playing childish games with some little boys. He laughed and jeered at Aesop, asking him why he wasted his time in such a frivolous activity. Aesop responded by picking up a bow, as in a bow and arrow, and loosening its string and placing it on the ground. Then he said to the critical Athenian, Now answer the riddle, if you can. Tell us what the unstrung bow implies. The man looked at it for several moments, but had no idea what point Aesop was trying to make. So Aesop explained, if you keep a bow always bent, it will break eventually. But if you let it slack, go slack, it will be more fit for use when you need it. That illustration may or may not be true about Aesop, but it is true that we all need rest. Sometimes it's a physical tiredness. Maybe it's because we're overworked, overexerted. Sometimes that physical tiredness may come from an illness. Uh, sometimes it could be a mental tiredness. I've been mentally tired many times. Might be a spiritual tiredness. You just kind of get worn down. The truth of the matter is, we all need rest. Amen. People are also like that, though. That's why we. That's why we all need to take time to rest. Eventually we'll break. When we're worn out, we're not much fit for use. Jesus prescribed time off for his weary disciples after they returned from a prolonged period of ministry. And that, that's found in Mark 6.31. We have the ultimate example in Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3, where God rested after creation was complete. Shouldn't we take those examples seriously? Start by setting aside a special time to relax physically and to renew yourself emotionally and spiritually. You'll be at your best for the Lord if you've taken time to loosen the bow. God gave us the, the example of sanctified a day of rest. That, the, the reference I just referred to, Genesis 2, 2 and 3. Uh, I'll, I'll read that. I can find my place here. Uh, and it says, On the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. That's still an example right there. Now, we see that God rested on the seventh day, but do you think that God was tired? I don't think he was. God's God. I don't think, right. he, I don't think he gets tired. Right. Sure. But what I do think is that he was merely setting an example for us. Amen. To help us to realize that it's good for us to rest. He created our bodies in such a way that we need to take time to rest. In Exodus 20, uh, chapter 23, verse 22, it says, Six days shalt thou do thy work, and on the seventh day shalt thou shalt rest. God commanded the Israelites to rest on the seventh day. Psalm 37, 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him. There are many more verses in the Bible that talk about rest. A few references are Jeremiah 6, 16, Find rest for your souls. Habakkuk 3, 16, Rest in the day of trouble. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. With the Lord putting so much emphasis on rest, and by the way, the word rest is used 275 times in the King James Version of the Bible. And that doesn't include other forms of the word. So it must be pretty important to God that, that we rest. 
Not only has he provided a day of rest for us, Bless you. but he designed us in such a way that we need daily rest. All right. At the end of each evening, I'm, I'm ready to sit down and get some rest. I'm ready to go to bed and get some rest. Man. God's designed our bodies that way. He gave us yeah. a day of rest, yeah. but he also designed our bodies to need that daily rest. So this evening, I want to give four ways or reasons that we can rest in the Lord. The thought, rest in the Lord, came to me several months ago. And I guess the Holy Spirit knew that I'd be speaking tonight, and He's given me plenty of time to consider this phrase. Bless you. So tonight, let me encourage you to rest in the Lord. So I'm going to use the letters R-E-S-T to help you remember to rest in the Lord. So first of all, we can rest in the Lord because... He's redeemed us. Amen. Amen. That's first and foremost. God has redeemed us. We can rest in Him because He's provided a way of salvation. He's redeemed our souls. He allowed His Son to die on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. So Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And the last part of verse 14 says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit of faith. In Titus 2.14, the Bible says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So you can see that we can rest in the Lord tonight, because he is our Redeemer. He provided us with a free pardon of sin through the death, burial, and resurrection of his Son. Aren't you glad that we can have the assurance of our salvation? Yes. We've got Amen. redemption. Amen. If you've never received that free part of sin, salvation, He's waiting to be your Redeemer. All you have to do is ask for it. Right. And it's free for the taking. Right. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reminds us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. We can't be good enough on our own to get a home in heaven. It's only by the grace through faith. Yes. So we can we can rest tonight because we're re redeemed. The letter E. We can rest in the Lord tonight because He tells us that His yoke is easy. Yeah. For anyone here tonight that's not familiar with what a yoke is, because it's not something that we hear of this day and time, it's a wooden cross piece that's fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to a plow or a cart that they are able to pull. So they're working together because this yoke is, is yoking them together. Yeah. It was very commonly used on oxen, but it could be used on other animals as well. I've already mentioned Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and through 30, which says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. And then here it is, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Did you notice that he says that he will give us rest for our souls in verse 29? I can imagine that when we take his yoke upon us, he's going to do most of the work. Amen. Amen. Although we're yoked together, he's, he's going to be doing more than we are. I, I can imagine that kind of like an adult and a child working together. I did this with my son. You know, he thought that he was really helping me with a lot of the tasks that we did. I was doing all the work, but it was giving him that opportunity to feel like he was helping. Amen. We were yoked together, Amen. doing this job together. Amen. Yeah. But I was going to work. I, I picture her, I picture the yoke with with Jesus as just like that. He says, "Come unto me, my yoke is easy." He's going, he's going to lighten our load. He's going to lighten our burden. So by taking his yoke upon you and allowing him to share your burden, he's able to lighten your load and give you the rest that you need. But you've got to take his yoke upon you. You've got to give him your burdens. You've got to lay them you've got, you've got to rely on him and lay your burdens on him so that he can help you. His yoke really is easy. So for the letter S, 
questions. Not going to be a very long message tonight, but hopefully it's a, bit, a very effective message. But we can rest in the Lord tonight because He has sealed us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Amen. That he has sealed yes. us. Amen. To make sure that I was using this word in the right way, because I wanted us all to understand the true meaning of the word, I looked up the definition of the word, and according to the <laughs> Merriam-Webster Dictionary, to seal is to confirm or make secure. Yeah. You know, we seal our doors, we seal our windows, you know, we're making them secure. So you see, when He, when God sealed us, He conformed, confirmed us. He removed our doubts. And He made us secure. John 10, verses 27 through 29 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Yeah. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. When he says any man in verse 29, I take it that I can't even pluck my own self out of his hand. But it's in Lord. Even if I wanted to, but why would I? Mm -hmm. Folks, that's sealed. That's firmly secure. Yeah. We're sealed in God's hand tonight. Bless him, Lord. Mm -hmm. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, <coughs> you've got that eternal security. There's nothing that can take that away. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, Paul wrote that we should be able to that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after who also after all that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Nice. which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of His glory. By the way, if you're saved, you're a purchased possession tonight because you were bought with a price. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. So you can rest in the Lord tonight because He's sealed us. Amen. Amen. You've been sealed. And that seal is unto the day of redemption. That's right, man. That's right. Bro. So, you know, these, these uh, people that say you can lose your salvation, these people that say that you can't, you know, if you sin, you're, you've lost your salvation, you've got to be saved over and over again, they, they've not read God's Word. That's mm -hmm. right. They, they've not taken yeah. what God has placed in right. His Word to heart right. because He sealed us until the day of redemption. Bless He's bought us with a price. You know, when Amen. I buy something, it's mine. They're not, they're not giving it back. It's mine. I purchased it. Lord. I take Amen. ownership of it. Just like Jesus Christ takes ownership of us. Yeah. He's right. purchased us. Amen. When we accept that gift that He's given us, we're sealed. And then for the letter T, we can rest in the Lord because, I like this, because He's trustworthy. Yeah. Amen. Yes. We can put all of our trust completely in Him. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of God making promises and fulfilling them. He promised Abram, later we know him as Abraham, in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3, and he followed through. In Joshua 23, 14, Joshua is addressing the children of Israel, and he says, And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass, and not one thing hath failed you thereof. Yes, God made a promise, and he followed through. He's trustworthy. Hebrews 6, 12 through 19 tells us that God fulfilled his promises, and that it is impossible for God to lie. Yes, you know, man will lie to you. Right. They'll blatantly tell you the biggest tale, and it'll be the biggest lie, and you can't trust them. But it's impossible. According to Hebrews, it's impossible right. for God to lie. That's right. Yeah. And of course, we're all familiar with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, yeah. and lean not to thine own understanding. In all our ways, yeah. acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Amen. Yes, 
And I have watched God, when I've put my trust in Him, I've watched Him direct my paths. I've watched Him take me where I needed to go. Sometimes it's not where I wanted to go or I thought I should go, but He's directed my paths and He's taken me where I need to go. First part of Hebrews 2, verse 13 says, And again, I will put my trust in Him. Yeah. Where's your trust at tonight? Amen. Amen. Good. Have you found that when you put all of your trust in the Lord and you acknowledge Him, and you don't always have to understand why things happen as they do, but have you experienced that He always directs your paths? He always takes you where you need to go? Bless the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God calls you to do something. He's going to see it through. He's, he's going to help you accomplish what he's called you to do. Other verses that talk about faithfulness of God, and there are so many more. 1 Corinthians 1.9, God is faithful. Hebrews 10.23, he is faithful that promised. 1 Peter 4, 19, He is a faithful creator. God's faithful. He's trustworthy. Yes. Amen. You can put your trust Amen. in God and yes. know that it's going to be placed in the best place that it can be put. Amen. He is faithful. He's trustworthy. Amen. Have you put your trust in Him? All throughout the Bible we can see that He's been very trustworthy. Amen. If you're here tonight and you believe God's Word, you can believe that he's trustworthy. Yes. Bless you, Jesus. So I want to encourage you to rest in the Lord because he is our Redeemer. Yeah. Trust in the Lord because his yoke is easy. Yeah. Trust in the Lord because he has sealed us. And trust in the Lord tonight because he's trustworthy. Amen. 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 Yes, I want to encourage you to rest in the Lord when things get hard, when life gets weary. Rest in the Lord. Amen. Yes. Psalm 37 7 says, Rest in the Lord Bless you, and Lord. wait patiently on Him. Psalm 46 10, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Bless you, Take time Jesus. to rest in the Lord. Amen. When you feel weary, when you feel tired, when you just feel worn out, remember God, God commands us to rest. Take him at his word and rest in him. Bless him, Lord. It's a short message tonight, but I hope it's very effective. I hope that you'll take it to heart. That when God tells us to do something, he wants the best for us. Sometimes we just kind of, we push ourselves. We try to do more than what we really need to be doing. Yeah. Sometimes we, we think that we need to for whatever reason. Take time and be still and know that God is God. Rest in Him. Let Him re replenish your energy so you'll be more fit for His use. Let's pray. Let's Heavenly Father, we thank You that You are our